The exercise of the visualizing faculty keeps your mind in order and attracts to you the things you need to make life more enjoyable in an orderly way. If you train yourself in practice of deliberately picturing your desire and carefully examining it, you will soon find that your thought and desires come and proceed in more orderly procession than ever before. Having reached a state of ordered mentality, you are no longer in a constant state of mental hurry. Hurry is fear, and consequently destructive. In other words, when your understanding grasps the power to visualize your heart's desire and hold it with your will, it attracts to you all things requisite to the fulfillment of that picture by the harmonious vibrations of the law of attraction. You realize that since order is heaven's first law, and visualization places things in the natural element, then it must be a heavenly thing to visualize. Everyone visualizes, whether they know it or not. Visualizing is the great secret of success. The conscious use of this great power attracts to you greatly multiplied resources, intensifies your wisdom, and enables you to make use of advantages which you formerly failed to recognize. We now fly through the air, not because anyone has been able to change the laws of nature, but because the inventor of the flying machine learned how to apply nature's laws and by making orderly use of them produced the desired result. So far as natural forces are concerned, nothing has changed since the beginning. There were no airplanes in the year one, because those of that generation could not conceive the idea as a practical working possibility. It has not yet been done, was the argument, and it cannot be done. Yet the laws and materials for practical flying machines existed then as now. Troward tells us that the great lesson he learned from the airplane and wireless telegraphy is the triumph of principle over precedent and the working of an idea to its logical conclusion in spite of accumulated testimony of all past experience. With such an example before you, can you not realize that still greater secrets may be disclosed? Also, that you hold the key within yourself with which to unlock the secret chamber that contains your heart's desire. All that is necessary in order that you may use this key and make your life exactly what you wish it to be is a careful inquiry into the unseen causes which stand back of every external and visible condition. Then bring these unseen causes into harmony with your conception and you will find that you can make practical working realities of possibilities which at present seem but fantastic dreams.